Don't eat my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they nuts? Hi, we're Graham and Tracy, the Flying Finnies. We've just spent a great few days in Goa and Colver Beach before embarking, sadly, on our last train trip in India. Join us as we travel around historic Port Kochi and experience the great food and the beautiful scenery this area has to offer. So over the next couple of days, we're going to spend time both here in Kochi, the old town, as well as heading down to Aleppi, where we might get to travel around in a canoe. Yeah, looking forward to that. We're doing a canoe tour around the backwaters of Aleppi. It's one of the classic things to do in this area. We hopefully will get some beach time in while we're here, and we're looking forward to trying some really great South Indian food as well. We were staying in a great place, just a few minutes stroll from the food and entertainment hub of Kochi, and about a 20 minute walk from the historic Jewish quarter. Staying at Kochi also allowed us to get up at sunrise to see the Chinese fishing nets in action. So the fishing nets that you see behind me, they're called Chinese fishing nets, but they're located both here in Kerala and also in places like Indonesia. Hardly anywhere else in India, which makes them a little bit of an oddity and also a bit of a tourist attraction here in Kerala. We were really fortunate that a local fishing crew allowed us to join them as they raised and lowered their nets into the water. It is an intensive and physical process, often yielding only a few fish at a time, but the rhythm of the work is mesmerising and wonderful to see. The fish caught in Kochi end up at either the local wholesale fish market or along the waterfront where they're sold directly to locals and visitors from vendors. We took a beautiful stroll along this waterfront, checking out the catch of the day and all the other interesting things to see. Some squid as well. And, could you not, the biggest prawns I've ever seen. This area really comes to life at the end of the day as people stroll to various vantage points to watch the sunset. And as usual, I enjoyed watching some puppies play in the sand. So this is the second time for today that I have been shat on by a bird. But this one is a doozy. It got my bag, my necklace and my shirt. But we've managed to clean that up with a bottle of water and one small tissue that we had left. And now we are seeking out a bar and we can see a sign in the distance. So we're going down this road to see if we can get a drink. Just follow the signs. Well, that was a fail. It smells like a dirty old club bar. It stinks of beer in the carpet and I'm not that desperate for a drink. Whether we chose the wrong night or the wrong area, our attempts to find a happening place met with limited success. However, this didn't distract from the other great things to do in Kochi. So, after a nice walk along the waterfront and seeing all the Chinese fishing nets, we jumped in a tuk-tuk and headed over to the Jewish quarter in Kochi. We were surprised that there was a Jewish quarter in Kochi um, it's an older part of town, lots of antique stores, places to buy clothes, bags. We've had a delicious spiced lassi and a ginger lime soda. And I think it's fair to say they're our two new favourite local drinks. We spent the afternoon wandering through these gorgeous streets and shop fronts, but our visit to Kochi would not be complete without mentioning some of the delicious food we had during our stay. We walked down to Princess Street, which is one of the main areas here in Kochi, and we've been diving into this delicious meal. I gather it's a very Kerala based meal. It's layers of chapati with some egg on top, chicken, normally some beef, but we've held off on that. There's onion all through it, and this really tangy, spicy sauce that 
is just really, really good. When we ordered it, um, I asked for some chapati as well, and they said, you're not going to need it. And he was absolutely right. Very filling. We generally enjoyed a delicious and very filling breakfast at our homestay, but ended up gravitating back to Princess Street for all of our other meals. So this almost looks like a Kerala version of Itali. There's beef, chicken, there's a couple of different seafoods in there, some crab. Um, <laughs> a bit concerned about these peppers here. Let's see how I handle that. And in the middle, this dipping sauce, which is just tomato-y. <laughs> and it has a kick. <laughs> Last dinner in Kerala. Parotta. Ooh, that. Yum. So it's all wrapped up in banana leaves. And there's a whole lot of Indian breads layered on each other with some beautiful corns. And chicken curry. <laughs> now, we don't normally give a shout out to the places that we stay at, but our homestay in Kochi was excellent. The rooms were spacious, meticulously clean, the service was great, and it was also the least expensive accommodation we've had in India. We hope you enjoyed this short visit to Kochi. Join us in our next video as we travel to Alipay and enjoy a magnificent sunrise cruise on Kerala's beautiful backwaters and canals.